Zambia's Chamber of Mines has been amongst those most critical of the shifts we've seen in the country's tax regime at the time of implementation of the upward revision of royalties and the outcry that ensued. It said that government should act swiftly to address concerns. Maureen Jangulo Lamini is the CEO of the Chamber and she joins us now. Thanks so much, Maureen, for your time uh, this afternoon. Of course, a month after implementation, we've seen that policy having been reversed. Is it a good enough signal for you that government is flexible and willing to compromise and listen to industry? Thank you. Um, I think it is. It's a good sign um, that we actually have dialogue between government and industry. Um, the fact that they've reviewed the um, original law gives us uh, confidence as industry that the government is um, very keen to ensure that the industry grows. Um, so reviewing it, I think, is, is a plus for the industry. Um, we raised concerns about what would happen to the jobs, what would happen to various things like CSR. And now that the government has revised that, although we still do have issues, um, but the good thing is that we are talking. You are talking. Having said that, did you see any merit in the move and the argument that government put on the table? It said that it's easier to administer royalty taxes when trying to rake in justified revenue for government coffers? We, we didn't see that as, as an easier way of, of raise, raising taxes because I think um, you, they now split between underground and open pit mines. And, and we sit as industry and say, how are they actually going to quantify what comes out of underground, what comes out of open pit mines? We thought it was a much more complex method of taxing the industry. And I think, you know, when we look at the quantum of, 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 of taxation, I think that was quite high. If we look at uh, the, the way industry is taxed globally, we are one of the most highly taxed jurisdictions even before that percentage, 20% and 8% increase. So we were very concerned with that. Uh, in as much as government uh, would try and justify it, I think there should have been much more consultation uh, before that law came out. Outside looking in, one gets a sense that you've got the Mines Ministry sitting on one end of this conversation and the Finance Ministry on the other, and this is certainly not going to be the end of the conversation where government, and specifically the Finance Ministry, is going to want its stake of the pie. So where does the focus of this conversation need to be moving forward, and what room is there for compromise? I think there's room for compromise. I think we all need to understand where the industry is at. Copper prices have fallen down. There are a lot of issues that affect the industry. And I think when we talk a, take a closer look at those issues, then we're able to come up with something that will work for the industry. Um, mm -hmm. You can carry on. OK, I've lost my train of thought. OK, no worries. We'll do that again. <laughs> It certainly doesn't seem to be end, uh, the end of the conversation, though. What room do you see there being for compromise? We, we, I think it's important that we look at uh, ways of increasing production. I think that's where we come from as an industry. Raising the taxation level doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get greater revenue uh, from the industry. Um, if we look at what happened in 2008, when our uh, uh, mineral royalty tax was about 3%, and you look at the revenue that was generated from the sector, it's much higher than what's coming in through now. So we're saying government industries should sit down and see what, what is the best, what is the win-win situation that we can come up with, where industry is sustained. And I think our concern is if you tax us much more, you run the risk of industry you lose the, the sustainability of the, of the mining industry, and that's what we're fighting against. Transparency, or the lack thereof, uh, seems to be a big part of the issue, resulting in this massive trust deficit between government and business. So how do we start closing that gap in your books? I think as, a, as an industry, we were concerned that uh, there's this lack of trust about, uh, with, with the industry. In 2012, we launched the ICMM report. That was an initiative carried out by the industry so that we could open up and see what the contribution actually was from the mining sector. And if you looked at what came out of there, there's significant contribution from the mining sector. Obviously, people will look and say this was a program initiated by the chamber or by the industry, so they will have question marks around that. But these were independent uh, parties that actually looked at the contribution of the sector to the economy. And then we, are, we subscribe to EITI, mm -hmm. and that's independent. And, and you can see what's coming out of there. There is significant contribution. So we, we as a mining sector, I think, have opened ourselves up. We are, we are, we are open for anyone to come and look at our books and see what, what the contribution is. 
So I think the, the issue of trust, and, and we keep saying it now, you know, uh, let's start a new leaf. We can't keep referring to the past. We're trying to build a sector, we're trying to build an industry, which is the backbone of the, of, of the economy of this country. And, and if we keep referring to issues of, of lack of trust, lack of transparency, we're actually not going forward. Because the consequences are dire, and the alarm you rang was that the proposed policy shift would have cost the country 12,000 jobs and nearly a third of GDP. What's your assessment of the state of industry right now? And is, is that economic growth target of even a lowered 5.8% a viable one? I refer to the issue of, of the lower copper prices. Um, to even project uh, a growth of 5.8%, I think is being a bit ambitious right now. Uh, our, our minds right now are in distress, for lack of a better word. Okay, that might be a strong word, but they are in, in serious problems. We have a situation where some of the mines are as asking for deferment in terms of paying taxes. So that should show how critical the situation is. Mm -hmm. But perhaps the focus now is getting, uh, uh, getting to the manufacturing sector and getting that to be more competitive, building that industry so that there's a maximizing of local content and value added. And you alluded to it slightly, uh, but talk us through the kind of stride that's being made in that regard. Yeah, um, I think in 2012, the, the then uh, Vice President launched the local Zambia Local Content Initiative. And what we're trying to do there is to say, beyond mining, what happens? Mm -hmm. How do we get other sectors of the economy to work with the mining industry now, to leverage off what is coming out of the mining industry to develop other sectors? And this program has been running, uh, I think, from this year. We partnered with DFID. Um, we've identified a couple of uh, uh, small to medium sized companies that are now able to supply the mines, the local mines. Aside from that, there are various initiatives that the mining companies are running, agriculture and initiatives, business development initiatives. And we're saying, let's not look to the mines as you know, the solution to, to the problems, mm -hmm. the employment problems that exist, the lack of economic growth. It's not going to come solely from the mining sector. We need to look at developing other sectors of the economy. Is there sufficient enough a skills pipeline to support an initiative like this? Absolutely. I think part of, part of this initiative is skills development. Even within the mining sector, we have now set up what we call ZAMSET, which is now looking at developing skills at a technical level. There has been a focus on um, tertiary institutions, universities, and the skills that come out of there. But we're saying we should now start looking at vocational training and see what skills come, can, can be developed to support not only the mining industry, but other sectors of the economy. What about the power situation in the country? Is there adequate enough power uh, to supply industries like these, fast-growing industries like this, so when they do come to the fore? To what extent does it pose a constraint? Right now there is a constraint, but I think um, if, we, if we look at what, what is in the pipeline, I think with the right management, uh, with the right planning, this really shouldn't be a problem um, in the next few years. I think there, there's significant projects that are in the pipeline that would be able to support uh, the industry. We do have challenges now. I mean, we, we can't run away from that. We had a couple of power outages that cost the industry quite significantly. Um, but we're hoping that you know the, the energy sector will pull up and, and help support the industry. So for you right now, what is the key risk to be managed when it comes to doing business in Zambia? I think we need predictability, we need stability in the fiscal regime. I think we, we run the risk of losing um, or scaring off investors. Um, this is um, a business that is long term. People need to be able to plan 10, 15 years ahead. But if, if we are going to be changing you know, tax laws every two, three years, that doesn't give our investors any, any comfort. Absolutely. Maureen, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for your time today. Of course, Maureen Jangulo-Dlamini is CEO of the Chamber of Mines in Zambia.